If you're watching this program, chances are you represent one of 140 public airports in Minnesota. The Minnesota Department of Transportation, MnDOT, helps build and maintain airports. But if services are to continue, certain requirements must be met. From an economic standpoint, an airport is extremely valuable to a community. Imagine, you are an officer of a growing company that's considering expansion. The availability of an airport may influence your decision where to locate. An accessible, well-managed airport is important to a community. But how effective can this service be if it doesn't have the right navigation aids maintained properly? In other words, the state has responsibilities, and so does each airport manager. But more important than who's responsible, there is an underlying mutual understanding that safety for pilots is always the most important consideration. You're well aware that navigation aids provide pilots with guidance. The more aids, the lower the pilot can go thus improving the availability of your airport in all weather. What aids are available for your airport? Rotating beacons denote a land civil airport. Their alternating green and white lights make them especially helpful for night landings. There are several sizes of rotating beacons, but in Minnesota, they're mostly 10 inches and 36 inches in diameter. While the 10 inch model is FAA approved, MnDOT doesn't assist with a purchase since its visibility and performance record is poor. The 36-inch model is more expensive, but it provides a better beam. The lamp lasts four years instead of three months, and it saves power. Over half our airports use the 36-inch beacon. Another saving of maintenance cost is to have the beacon tower constructed of weathering steel. It doesn't require painting. Another important basic navigation aid is a windsock. It allows pilots to quickly determine the direction and relative strength of the wind. A windsock is mounted on a standard near the center of the airport, and it's lighted if the runway has lights for night operation. Of the lights available for windsocks, spotlight type lamps are the best. Large reflectors are prone to wind vibration. The three light clusters are least effective. It's important to frequently change the windsock. It becomes ineffective when it's faded. And as an incentive to keep windsocks in optimum condition, MnDOT furnishes them free. Call MnDOT to have one sent to your airport. These red and white lights are visual approach slope indicators, commonly referred to as VASI. VASIs are light boxes mounted at the side of the runway. They give pilots a visual indication as to whether the plane is on the proper guide path. Each box emits either a red or white light, depending on whether the plane is high or low. A recent innovation, the Precision Approach Path Indicator, or PAPI, is based on the same principle of red and white differentiation as VASI. It combines four equally spaced lights on a single horizontal bar, providing a quick, easy readout. Another advantage of the PAPI system is a more precise determination of the aircraft's position with regard to the ideal guide path. Runway lights are probably the most neglected navigation aid. In some airports, nearly one half need repair. These illuminated rows show how they appear to pilots. The edge lights are mounted on each side of the runway to define the perimeter of the landing area. These runway lights are threshold lights. Their lenses are split, so they show green on the approach and red at the end of the runway. Low-intensity runway lights are clear lamps, usually mounted on stakes. They come in only one intensity, 120 volt, usually 25 or 40 watt. Along with the beacon, low-intensity runway lights are usually the first navigation aid to be installed at small airports. Lurls are easy to maintain and consume very little power. Medium intensity runway lights are capable of producing three intensities. They can be designed for a common 120 volt system 
or a series system using a constant current regulator. The 120 volt system uses a regular screw-in light and the series system has a bayonet-based type lamp. In a series system, the lamps burn at an equal intensity. Staked mounts don't allow for maintenance or removal of the transformers during colder weather. Ken mounts, however, allow easy year-round access. High-intensity runway lights are connected in a series system and are capable of five intensities. The lamps are usually 200 watts. They're usually installed on runways that have a precision instrument approach procedure. These strobe lights located on the sides of the runway threshold are called runway and identifier lights. They're unidirectional and flash simultaneously once per second. The old style of runway and identifier lights has only one intensity, but the new styles have three. Their purpose is to help locate the threshold at night or in bad weather. They are difficult to maintain. Airports with heavy traffic and large planes usually have blue medium intensity taxiway lights. These show pilots the exits and outline the taxiways. Medium intensity taxiway lights have two levels of brightness. These lights are expensive to maintain because of high power consumption. A power saving alternative to medium intensity lights are elevated taxiway reflectors located along the taxiways. They're 30 inches tall and are used in place of lights. They also are effective during the day to define the taxiways. These illuminators are retroreflective markers that reflect an airplane's landing light. Another way to improve an airport's all-weather landing capabilities is to install omnidirectional approach lights located on the extended center line at the approach end of a runway. They may be mounted near the ground or on small towers. When working properly, these lights lower the minimum altitude allowed for instrument approach procedures. The principles behind their effectiveness is they flash in sequence toward the runway, providing a stream of light to help the pilot. Omnidirectional approach lights work in conjunction with a pair of runway and identifier lights at the threshold. A medium intensity approach light system with runway alignment indicator lights gives pilots directional and roll guidance. These seven rows of burning lights are used in sequence with five strobe lights located at the approach end of the runway. Each has three intensities. The medium intensity system is effective. Pilots appreciate the precision it adds to landings. But due to the large number of lights, continual maintenance is required to maintain maximum reliability. Another navigation aid that gives pilots landing and rollout guidance are touchdown zone reflectors. They are retroreflective markers installed on the runway pavement in the touchdown zone and surrounding area. Touchdown zone reflectors can withstand powerful snow plows and are inexpensive to maintain. In the category of more sophisticated navigation aids are radio controllers. The pilot is able to change the intensity of the lighting equipment during landing. Power savings result since the lights are normally on at low intensity and increased when needed by the pilot. The intensity is changed when the pilot clicks his mic button a specified number of times. A pilot will normally brighten the lights when he is a few miles from the airport and then lower the intensity as he makes his final approach. The lights automatically return to low after 15 minutes have elapsed. There are additional improvements that would be part of a larger, more sophisticated system. There are distance to go markers to show the length of remaining runways. The guide signs identify taxiways and runways. Electrical buildings house field lighting controls. They're usually heated to provide the proper climate for control equipment. And they allow necessary space for spare parts and repair benches. An emergency generator can be installed to furnish electricity to the airport lighting systems during a power failure. Protector pads are diamond-shaped, concrete pads installed around runway lights. Their purpose is to prevent weeds from growing and make mowing easier. 
Radio navigation aids help enhance an airport's services. For example, there's a non-directional beacon, a low-frequency transmitter that indicates the location of the airport. The non-directional beacon's antenna is suspended from three wooden poles. A VOR is a very high-frequency omni-radio range. It provides the pilot accurate guidance to the VOR. A VOR shows the pilot which radio he or she is flying. And distance measuring equipment, or DME, when installed in conjunction with a VOR, indicates a plane's distance from the VOR. A feature that is a benefit to the airport owner and airport user is a detector system for the air and vehicle traffic. A detector is installed on the taxiway that leads to the apron area. When an airplane activates the detector, it turns on the ramp lights to illuminate the area for the pilot and deplaning passengers. A similar detector can be installed on the entrance road to turn on a light in the parking lot when it senses a vehicle. It also is a deterrent to vandalism. Aviation is continually changing, and there are always opportunities to keep pace with new technology. And along with additional services come additional responsibilities. It's all part of what makes this industry so challenging. This is an invitation to you to join other airports around the state in meeting those challenges.